Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. It's mid-June 2021, and I've been off the grid for a few weeks with some family travel. The opening graphic is the second reminder that the channel name is changing from Ham Cured Smoke to Ham Radio A to Z. As of right now, the channel name is officially changed. You shouldn't need to do anything if you've already subscribed. In this video, we're just going to go over the D-Star registration process, so let's get right to it. Whiskey Romeo 5 Golf, Cherry in Arizona on D-Star. Whiskey 5, Juliet Delta X-Ray, George on D-Star. Whiskey Alpha 2, India Victor Delta, Tom in Branson, Missouri on D-Star. I was able to check into the Amateur Logic soundcheck net while we were on the road. There were no D-Star repeaters near us at this particular site, so I was using a full duplex hotspot to get into the system. As far as the radio is concerned, it just looks like a repeater. Whether you're using a local repeater or your own hotspot, your call sign must be registered with the D-Star gateway system before you can use any of the gateway or networking features. Let's see how that process works. Okay, you want to register for D-Star. The first thing that you should do, if you think there's any possibility that you may have registered for D-Star in the past, is to check your registration. And what I mean by may have registered, let's say a few years ago you thought about playing with D-Star and you think maybe you went in and registered somewhere for it, but you're not quite sure you've never done anything with it, then you should check here first. And this is the registration page at dstargateway.org. I'll have all these links in the description, so you can click on those to go right to these pages. So we're going to put in, I'm going to put my call sign in here. So WA2... I, V, D, and actually let's get this so you can see this a little better. All right, and submit. So I have been approved on KI6WZX, and this is the repeater where we used to live in California that I registered through. So this was through my local D-Star repeater that I registered. It says I have terminals registered. Bottom line is I'm registered. If you have registered for D-Star anywhere once, you don't need to register again. Even if you move to a new state and you're on a different repeater now, it doesn't matter. Once you've registered anywhere in the D-Star gateway system, then you are registered. You don't ever need to do it again. So just for grins, I'll show you what you would get if you haven't ever registered. And I happen to know that my wife's call sign isn't registered, although we're going to be doing that shortly. She hasn't really done anything on D-Star. So I'm going to submit my wife's call sign, and then this is what you would get. The N2LZN is not registered for D-Star. So if you get this, then you can go and register, and they actually have a convenient link right here to go to the D-Star gateway, and we'll get to that in just a second. So if you're absolutely positive you've never registered for D-Star, you can skip this step, but this is a good check. All right, we've confirmed that we haven't registered, so what's the next step? Generally, the recommendation is that you register through a local D-Star repeater if you have one in your area. So I'm going to go to dstarusers.org, and again, I'll have the link for this in there. And they have a repeater directory here. So if you want to see if you have a repeater you can register through, first you want to check this box here that says Gateway Enabled. Whoops. Um, let me, sorry. Let me make this a full screen for you so you can see the whole thing here. So I'm sorry, I'm on uh, dstarusers.org, the repeater directory, and then I've clicked this gateway enabled checkbox here. And then of course select whatever country you want to look for repeaters in. I'm going to look in the United States. 
Conveniently, you can have this sort by state or city or call sign if you know you've got a repeater in your area. Uh, you can sort by call sign and search for it. Uh, whoops, I'm going to search by state in order here. And I'm just going to go down and um, I'm going to kind of pick one at random here in California for now. And if you go to the page for the repeater by clicking on the call sign, it brings up this information page and there is this gateway registration URL. And you'll notice on this repeater, it's blank. So if your local repeater this has this URL blank, they don't have a way for you to register through their gateway system. And honestly, I will tell you, I've, I've done some browsing through here, and there are a lot of repeaters where, like for here it says see below, so they have some information below. I've found that this link is either missing or it doesn't work. But if you do have the link, again, the recommended way is to click on that link, which will take you to the gateway registration. Um, I'm going to take you to the generic registration, which is if you don't have a repeater in your area or you don't want to register through your local one. And uh, that is registration dstargateway.org and then it, it's the, got the the rest of the page address here now you see my call sign comes up in here because I have a password manager so you can ignore that for the moment you're gonna come up blank here you're not gonna log in because you're not registered you can click on these registration instructions if you like and that'll take you to a page that kinda walks you through the process but Otherwise, you're going to come down here and click on the register button. And it's pretty straightforward. You're going to put your call sign in. You're going to put your name. You're going to put a good email address for yourself. And then you're going to put in a password. And you have to click, yes, you agree to this. Now, I'm already registered, so obviously I'm not going to go through all of this. And then when you're done, you would click OK and then it usually takes if I remember it's it's been a long time since I registered but I think it was like one or two days before I got an email back saying that my registration had been approved and usually there's a a person who will check and make sure your call sign is valid um, and then you get an email back and I don't recall if you have to reply to that email to or click on a link in that email to verify your registration or not it's been quite a while but this part of the process should be pretty straightforward so you're gonna click OK and then wait for your registration once you have your registration I'm gonna go back to this is the repeater that I registered through now, if you do register through a repeater, you do have to always log in through that registration link. So again, maybe this is a better reason for going to the generic one. Um, if you think your repeater may be shutting down or whatever, um, if you go through the generic one, you can log in there. Because if you register through your repeater's registration link and then you go to the generic registration link your call sign and password will not work I've tried it so I have to log in through my repeater one so my call sign and password is already typed in here I'm gonna hit log in and then there's user information this is just basically call signs that are being heard um, gateway information which is the information on gateways all over the place and then I'm gonna go all the way over here to personal information and this is my information and actually let's zoom in a little bit on this so you can see this better and so name email password is pretty straightforward you can click on any of these check boxes if you want to update these fields and then the key thing that you need to do once you've registered is you need to put in at least one terminal entry and you can see the first one that I did here was just my call sign this was my um, radio 
the initial is uh, just an initial to designate it as a different item. So if you were going to have several radios uh, on the air at the same time on D-Star, you would need to create several terminal entries, and then you would just pick a letter of the alphabet. I'm going to suggest you don't pick A, B, or C, because those are the standard designators for 2-meter, 440, and 1296 repeaters. Um, but you can put multiple radios in here, and then you'll see also I have a Y and a Z, and then I have this box checked that says that it's an access point or a hotspot. So the other editing functions, and you can also see, I'm sorry, you've got up to eight terminals that you can enter. Uh, if I wanted to delete one of these, I would just click this checkbox, and then once you've done all your editing, you click update. So I'm not going to make any changes right now. And again, if you're just getting started, you don't have a hotspot, you're just going to set up a radio, all you would do is put in your call sign, you don't need any initial, and then you would click update, and then that would set up a single terminal for you, and that's it. You would be done with all your registration. So I'm going to log back out of here. And yes, I'm sure I want to log out. That's really it for the D-Star registration. The information is out there if you search uh, for it, but I haven't found it really in a good consolidated place that kind of goes through how you do this. So hopefully this is helpful. This is the registration. The next thing we'll do is we'll look at getting a radio set up. That's about it for registering with the D-Star system. Next time, we will program the radio for a repeater and look at making gateway calls to specific people, to other repeaters, or to a reflector. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate a click on the like button. If you're finding the channel useful, please consider subscribing. You can also click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. I always appreciate your questions, corrections, and any other comments in the comment section. Please check out the companion website at a to z dot tech. There'll be a link in the description for that, along with all the links I mentioned during the last segment. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.